Anyway, a little while later, Disney spun off Mickey Mouse Works into House of Mouse, giving the cartoons a nightclub framing device with cameos from all sorts of Disney characters, and yes, the mansion characters are included. As far as I've discovered, there were two particularly prominent uses of mansion ghosts in House of Mouse. The first was in the direct-to-video spin-off movie, Mickey's House of Villains. Like any House of Mouse episode, it's filled with archive shorts, including the Mickey Mouse work segments Mickey's Mechanical House, How to Haunt a House, Dance of the Goofies, and Hansel and Gretel, and also three classic Disney shorts, Donald and the Gorilla, and the same two that the Mouse Factory episode used, Trick or Treat and Lonesome Ghosts. I guess they figured it was easier to pad a TV episode out to a featurette length with more shorts than with more scenes. Maybe they were like, this way we could just trim some shorts and slide it in with regular House of Mouse reruns. I don't know. Welcome! Welcome, my children! <laughs> oh boy, I love Halloween! Lots of haunted happenings around town. No, that was four years ago. I've got a trick for Mickey Mouse. But you will all have to wait until midnight. <laughs> This movie was advertised as being the big shakeup. The villains are taking over the House of Mouse. Oh no. That is teased at the beginning, but it doesn't actually happen until 45 minutes into this 68 minute video. Six of the eight shorts featured in this episode play before the plot actually starts. There's less than 20 minutes of actual plot in this over an hour long special, but in those handful of minutes, the villains take over, including Cruella releasing the hitchhiking ghost from a crate, and other familiar mansion ghosts also show up. Some of them even get a line in the song. It's the fact you can't ignore! It's a shorter line than the racist Lady and the Tramp Cats get, but hey. The next year, on October 10, 2003, another Halloween episode aired called House Ghosts. This episode starts with... Welcome! Welcome, my children! <laughs> the same Mickey monologue sequence that House of Villains started with. <laughs> oh boy, I love Halloween! Lots of haunted happenings around town! Five years ago now, Mickey. But one thing is added to the end of the monologue, a doom buggy. That wasn't in House of Villains. More mansion iconography, let's do it. Also, two of the Mickey Mouse work shorts in this episode are two of the same that House of Villains used, the same Hansel and Gretel Silly Symphony, and the same goofy How to Haunt a House cartoon. But that's where seeing the same footage we saw in House of Villains ends. But we do get the same plot device as Pete sees the crate of hitchhiking ghosts. All right, you grim grinning ghosties. Get out there and haunt this house. So Pete unleashes them as revenge for nobody liking his costume. But it backfires on him as the ghosts harass him instead and Mickey seems completely unbothered. When the crypt doors creak and the tombstones wake, spooks come out for a swinging wake. They sing a swinging arrangement of Grim Grinning Ghosts arranged by House of Mouse composer Mike Tavera. Vocalize. Grim Grinning Ghosts come out to socialize. It's a fun rendition. I like it more than either of the sing-along versions, even more than the one I'm nostalgic for. And the sequence features fun cameos from other mansion ghosts, including the Executioner, not being a doorman, and the Beating Heart Bride, catching Pete's eye before scaring him crapless. There's also more Disney animated spooks, including the Skeleton Dance Skeletons, and yes, the Lonesome Ghost who seem really delighted at seeing Pete naked. Anyway, despite Mickey being unbothered, the happy haunts somehow prevent the costume contest from happening. But, but we didn't have the costume contest, Donald. Didn't you see the ghosts? Wow, we'll have to have the costume contest next year. I would have loved to see more mansionery throughout the episode, but this musical number captures the playful spirit of the Grim Grinning Ghost pretty well. It doesn't quite capture the scary side of the mansion for anything more than a laugh, but you know, it's a kid show for Saturday morning. If you're going to use the mansion characters in a family-friendly Saturday morning show, this is a pretty good use of them. So hurry back, we would like your company.